By the robot in eerste laan, dear Marita van Aspegen. Twee pare voete gerts oor die teer, sy arm en nek is so stuif en so seer, sy bene so lam van gister sy staan, ingehaak volg hy gedwee waar hulle gaan. Moederse bande knars tot stilstand, in die blikkie klingel vijf cent en een rand. Hy ruik die vis en chips winkel van eerste laan, hier by die robot waar hy die dag omstaan. Sy arm word geplik en geruk en hy skrik, toe sy voet dom oor een pijp een kant toe swik. Ons beter geld kry of ek los jou hier, sis die tsotsie en sy asem ruik na bier. Sy hart klop vinnig soos die van een bang kind. Hoe sal hy weer sy leeplek van hier af kan vind? Die verkeerslig klik en die engines bril saam, sy dove oe bewind opwaarts geslaan. Tring, tring, laai een fiets sy klokkie. Hy buk af en trek aan sy stikkende sokkie. Die verkeersrug klik en bande skier oor teer. Sy arm en skouwer is so stuif en so seer. Een motor ruit tjir af en ver weg dreun een bus. As die dood om toch net wil kom haal, dan kan hy verewig en altyd rus. Die tsotsie skraap sy keel en spoege straal. Geld klingel in die blikkie en lee dan stil. Die duive koer en een kinkie jil. Een mammie, hy is blind, piep een dochterkie sag. Hy draai sy kop skuins en hy wag. Hier is nog tien rand, sê die vrou. Koop vir jou iets om aan te kou. Die verkeerslig klik en hy hou aan met wag. Die tsotsie plik om aan sy seer arm en lag. Goed met tricks, as ons kyk na hierdie gedig, kan ons kommentaar lever oor die uiterlijke bou, eindelijk voordat ons weet wat in die gedig aangaan. So as ons praat van die uiterlijke bou, is dit dit wat ons sien. In hierdie gedig sien ons acht stroofes, en hierdie acht stroofes is elkeen kwatreine. Remember, a stanza with four lines is also known as a kwatreine. Al te saam is daar 32 versreels en if you listen, if you listen to me reading the poem, you would have picked up that we have a fixed rhyming pattern. Most of the stanzas are known as par rhym, a, a, b, b, except for stanza 6 is kruis rhym, a, b, a, b. Ons sien ook in hierdie gedig dat daar min of geen hoofletters is en daar is ook min of geen leestekens. Wanneer ons praat van die skryver en die spreker, is dit belangrijk dat jylle die onderscheid tref, omdat die skryver is die dichter, die persoon wat die gedig geskryf het en die spreker is die persoon wat praat in die gedig. So ons weet dat die skryver van hierdie gedig is Marita van Aswegen. Die spreker in hierdie gedig, die persoon wat praat, is een derde persoon spreker. So it's a third person narrator. It's a person who is almost observing and looking at the scene in front of him or her and then commenting on that. Ok, die spreker vertel die story soos wat hy of sy dinge sien afspeel. As ons kyk na die titel, remember the title is always important. I like telling my learners that die titel toets ons voorkennis, it tests our prior knowledge, dit geef ons extra inlichting, it gives us extra information and it makes us curious, dit maak ons neskierig. When we read by die robot in eerste laan, our prior knowledge tells us that it is at a traffic light in First Avenue, okay, so it's a specific place, um, it gives us extra information, it just tells us the context, okay, the rhyme term, and then it makes us curious, we want to ask the question, wat gebeur by die robot in 
eerste laan. Goed. Goed, Matrix, kom kyk na die ontleding van die gedig. Wat ons nou gaan doen is, ons gaan na elke strofe individueel kyk. We're going to look at each stanza and we are going to look at the content, technical aspects as well as what is the message of that specific stanza. So, onthou, um, elke strofe communikeer iets specifiek met ons. We want to understand the content of our poem. And when we look at vers technische aspekte, we also want to see which technical aspects that the poet use to write this poem. So technical aspects would be things like figures of speech, half frames, so as assonantie and alliteratie, elisie and versie, polis and the ton. So these are all elements that can be used to make a poem more um, interesting and yes, um, it is also elements that we need to know, alright, so it's important that when I, I highlight them, you must know them because you will be able to, you should be able to identify them in any of our other poems as well. Strofe 1 Twee pare voete gerts oor die teer, sy arm en nek is so stuif en so seer, sy been is so lam van gisterse staan, ingehaak volg hy gedoeie waar hulle gaan. So, eerst en stel ons op die so dat dit is een derde persoon spreker. We see that it's a third person speaking. We only see, we, we read that daar is twee pare voete, so two pairs of feet means twee mense loop saam. Goed, en ons sien in vers reel 2, sy arm is die nek is stuif en seer, so we know there is someone who has physical pain, and then in line 4 we read, in gehaak volg, hulle gedwee, volg hy gedwee waar hulle gaan, so we know that there is two people, we don't know who they are, but we know that there are two people here, um, and kom ons kyk na um, dit reel vir reel, um, ons sien dis een kwatrein, vier vers reels, en ons het Jy kan sien, dit is paar rein. Goed, twee pare voete gerts oor die teer. Two pairs of feet. Um, gerts is a klank na bootsing. It's the sound your feet make as you walk um, on the tar road. Goed, so die twee mense loop gerts gerts oor die teer. Sy arm en nek is so stuif en so seer. So die een persoon, sy arm en nek is stuif, is stuif en soor. And we see S alliteration there. The S sound alliterated, emphasizing how soor and stuif the neck of this person is and his arm. Sy bene is so lam van gisterse staan. So his legs are tired. Um, van gisterse staan. So we know he was on his feet for quite some time the previous day. In gehaak volg hy gedoe waar hulle gaan. So in gehaak means linked in, um, you are linked, your arms are linked with someone else. En volg is follow hy gedoe means without any complaint, he's submissive um, Volg hy gedoe waar hulle gaan. So this one person with the physical pain, hy is onderdanig, he is submissive towards the one who is walking with him and he is just meekly following him wherever they go. Technische aspekte met tricks in versie sien ons daar in reel 4. In gehak volg hy gedoe waar hulle gaan. In gehaak is the verb, nee, and it shouldn't actually be at the beginning of the line, but it is there purposefully to emphasize the word that he is um, linked with someone else. He's not walking by himself. Again, in, in fashi is when words are switched around for emphasis. Goed. We see alliteratie and assonansi in stanza 1. And then I think it's important to also mention that we have in line 1 a metaphor. So the metaphor is die twee pare voete wat gerts oor die teer. So the feet, the feet can't gerts gerts make the sound. It is, um, it is the metaphor 
the, well, the, excuse, the metaphor is also the two pairs of feet is, it's not just two pairs of feet, it's actually two people, ne? so that is the metaphor for two people. But that makes ook die geluid, hulle maak die geluid gerts, gerts, wat dan tot de mate, dan seker dan nou perse voor, voor personificatie of klank nou boortsing is. Strofe 2 Moederse bande knars tot stilstand. In die blikkie klingel 5 cent in een rand. Hy ruik die vis en chips winkel van eerste laan, hier by die roe bot waar hy die dag omstaan. So here, if we look at the content, we get a little bit more information about the people that we've read about in stanza 1. So remember the ruimte or the context is, um, we first read about them walking um, on the tarred road. Now we have a traffic light and we know that it is in First Avenue. So if we start there, it says motors se bande knars tot stilstaan. So cars and their tires um, come to a halt, all right? So knars is klank na boetsing. It's like that sound it makes. The cars are probably driving fast and the sound it makes when the traffic light is red and they have to um, stop. In the blikkie klingel 5 cent in a rand. So in our South African context, but actually it's universal across the world, the, we, if we think of a tin can and money inside of it, um, we immediately think that it's probably a beggar or people raising funds. Good. Hy ruik die vis en chips winkel van eerste laan. So we see that the, this person is smelling the fish and chips uh, shop, uh, restaurant, that is also in First Avenue, that is our context, and here by the robot, here at the traffic light, where he the day omstaan. So here we get lots of information. It's a person who stands at the traffic light with a tin can, with a one rand and a five cent in it, and he spends his whole day there. I stand the day om. Okay, so we make the conclusion that this person who also had a sore neck and an arm, he is a beggar, he is a bedelaar, and I stand by the robot and bedel for geld. We also see that the poet uses syntuiglike waarneming, syntuie, your sen te senses, your, um, and in this case it's the sense of smelling, reek, um, and we have to ask, um, maybe he's hungry, right? I think it's safe to say that many people who beg at the traffic light is not in a favorable financial position. Okay, many of us read the book Linse Langstan Skune, and we know in her case it was just a little bit different, her motives of why she begged, but we also know that many people beg at the robot or traffic light because they really need the money and we can't help but wonder if the smell of the fish and chips winkle isn't even more prevalent because he might be hungry. Goed. Strofe 3 Sy arm word gepluk en geruk en hy skrik to sy voet dom oor a pijp een kant toe swip ons beter geld kry of ek los jou hier sis die tsotsie en sy asem reik Nabir. In this stanza, we get more information about who the second person is um, with whom this beggar was walking. So, kom ons kyk daar. Sy arm word geplik en geruk en hy skrik. So, this is the beggar who is being pulled, tugged and pulled by um, this other person. And we see that he gets a fright. In to sy foot dom where a pipe een kan toe swik. So, um, to say that your foot is uh, dom or being silly means that um, it's personificatie that we see there. Maar ons sien dat hierdie persoon um, sy voet het nie eers achtergekom daar sy pijp nie, daar het hy, hy dit nie gesien nie. En toe val hy en hy swik en hy stumble en hy het sy voet ook seer gemaakt. So, 
en dis alles in die proces, toe hierdie ander persoon hom ruk en plik, um, en hy het ook nie hierdie man sien nader kom nie, want hy het eindelijk geskrik vir hierdie ou oog. En dan die woorde in vers reel 11, the words in line 11, which is the words of this other person, and his direct words, because we see the inverted commas, hy sê, ons beter geld kry, of ek los jou hier. We better get money, or I leave you here. Ok? En dan sien ons in vers reel 12, sis die tootsie, en sy aas en reik na bier. So sis is also klank na boeting, but it's also the sound that a snake makes. And here we get the information, the other person is a tootsie, en sy aas en reik na bier. Now that is a common word in South Africa, for a troublemaker, um, for iemand wat moeilijkheid maak, en um, ons kom achter dat hierdie tootsie is bezig om hierdie um, ander persoon, die bedelaar, um, rond te shant. Hy sê vir hom wat hy moet doen, en hy dreig hom, hy is threatening him, he says, if you don't get money, I'm gonna leave you here. And then we also smell his bread, well, the person, um, the beggar smells his bread, but the, the poet is again using hierdie sintuigelike waarneming of smell, another sense of one of the senses he's using smelling to also help us understand how this um, beggar is perceiving his his environment or the, what happens with him. Goed, so ons maak die afleiding dat die tootsie die geld gebruik om drank te koop. Ons sien somme technische elemente soos enjam bemend where one line runs over into the next. I said that in line 10 it's personification when um, when his feet are dumb or silly to, to, to stumble over um, the sidewalk or a pipe. Um, en dan sien ons polis in de ton. Now, polis in de ton matrix is when we, we, emf, we repeat ons herhaal um, conjunction words and especially the word en, die voegwoord. And it is where we see geplik en geruk en geskrik, so that word is being repeated, and the function is to emphasize um, to the way the tzotzi is actually um, not treating this person well. Mishandle is abuse. Strofe 4 Sy hart klop vinnig soos die van een bang kind. Hoe sal hy weer sy leedlik van hieraf kan vind? Die verkeerslig klik en die engines brul saam, sy dove oe bewind opwaarts geslaan. Sy hart klop vinnig soos die van een bankend. In line 13 we see a simile of a vergelijking. His heart is beating as fast as that of a um, scared child. And why is his heart beating so fast? He's got, um, hy het vrees, he, he fears, he, he fears the fact that if he doesn't get money, then he won't be able to get to the place where he sleeps. Now this is odd because why won't he be able to get to the place where he sleeps? Alright, remember in the previous stanza, the guy said, dan los ek jou net hier, I will leave you just here. So we see a type of dependence, this beggar is dependent on the Tootsie to help him get to the place where he, he stays, alright? So let's see in line 14, it says, Hoe sal hy weer sy leeplek van hieraf kan vind? It's a rhetorical question, but that is the concern that adds to the fear this beggar has, how will he be able to find his place? So maybe he is not familiar with the place where he is. I don't know if he has dementia. What We have to ask these questions. How can he not then find the place where he stays or sleeps by himself? And then line 15, die verkeerslig klik en die engines brul saam. Um, so we see that there's a change again on the traffic light. The, the, um, the, it's probably green and the, the cars are 
the the engines um you can hear the sound and the sound is like the sound of lions but brawl and we know that that can also emphasize these feelings of fear um it also symbolizes um gevaar nee dit verteenwoordig gevaar um danger um and and as these cars start moving at this traffic light where the beggar is standing we read in line 16 which is very important the following words sy dove oë bewind opwaarts geslaan and here we get the information that this beggar is blind his eyes are dof it's hazy or i'm not sure if that's the correct english word but he, you can see in his eyes that he's blind and he's he's looking up hy kyk opwaarts and we have that verse in the bible that says i slaan sy oë op i think in the bible it says i slaan sy slaan sy oë op na die berge van waar sal my hulp kom maar in hierdie geval die man slaan sy oë op en hy wonder waar gaan sy hulp vandaan kom so very important that we note here that the beggar is blind die bedelaar is blind sy dove oë wat opwaarts geslaan is word beklemtoon deur die assonansie van die aanklank we again see klank na bootsing which is onomatopoeia in this stanza it's highlighted in red and dan sien ons ons verstaan nou we understand the content better that this beggar is fearful because he is dependent on the totsi to take him back to the place where he can see because he's blind and he can't see for himself where he um where he can't walk by himself strofe 5 tring 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 lei 'n fiets se klokkie hy buk af en trek aan sy stikkende sokkie die verkeerslig klik en bande skier oorteer Sy arm en skouer is so stuif en so seer. So now that we know that he's blind, we really understand that he, because he does not have the sense of sight, he is really more dependent on his smelling and his hearing. Okay? And in line 17, we, we almost hear the sound of the bicycle bicycle the the clocky that goes tring tring and again we see in farsi which is omgekeerde woordorde words that is swapped around um and the function always is to emphasize those words that is placed at the beginning or at the end of the sentence okay so we won't that a, a, a sentence isn't really a proper sentence when it starts with tring tring lay like a clocky you would rather read a clocky a fiets a clocky lei tring tring but the reason why an farsi is used here meaning that the tring tring is placed at the beginning of the line is to really emphasize the sound and that is actually the first and the only thing that the the beggar hears um he can't see the person on the bike cycling he needs he, the sound of of the bicycle and the clocky is what is really important. Goed. So weer eens die sintuiglike waarneming is die klank wat daar in rooi beklemtoon word. Hy buk af en trek aan sy stikkende sokkie. So here we just read that um this person um probably really struggles because his sock his socks or sock has a hole in it um that is being emphasized with the alliteracy of the S sound. Die verkeerslilig klik en bande skier oor teer. So here the traffic light is red again and we hear with the klik en die skier how the cars come to a halt again. Die bande is the tires and um, they stop at the traffic light, the cars. Um, en sy arm en skouer is so stuif en so seer. Line 20 is almost just the exact repetition of line 2 and it's really to emphasize that the person the beggar is physically in pain 
Um, and the East alliteration is also emphasizing that physical pain that he has. Strofe 6, a motor right cheer af in far weg dreun a bus. As die dood om toch net wil kom haal, dan kan hy vir ewig en altyd rus. Die tsotsie skraaf sy keel en spoeg a straal. Immediately we note that the rhyming is different in this stanza. That is Christ rhyme. And we have to ask ourselves, why is this the only stanza where the rhyming pattern is different? And I can yeah, just say that it is with a specific reason because the poet wants to emphasize this specific um, stanza as an important one. So a motor right cheer off in far weg dreun a bus. So again, the klank na bootsing, the sounds that we hear through the ears of the blind beggar. Um, so we know that the traffic light is red and we, we hear that a car, the, the car window is going down. Okay. And this, this blind person is thinking by himself in line 22. As die dood hom toch net wil kom haal. Goed. Um, kan die dood my kom haal? I want death to come and fetch me. That is personification. Okay. Death can't really run and put you in its bag. Alright. But the, that's the personification. Dan kry hy vir ewig en altyd ris. This is the desire of this man, guys. He just wants to rest. Alright. But that is not a luxury for this disabled person who struggles and needs money and someone to look after him. So his desire is that he wants to rest. And as I praat van dan kan hy vir ewig en altyd ris, we also see it's a euphemism, a euphemism. Om altyd te ris, vir altyd, is eindelijk een mooie manier om te sê dan is jy dood. Goed. Die tsotsie skraap sy keel en spoeg a straal. That's line 24. And here we see almost the contrast of his desire to rest and a safe place, if I can put it like that, and the contrast with hierdie tsotsie wat clear, he's clearing his throat and he's spitting um, the flame or whatever out of his mouth. And yeah, this is just such a, in Afrikaans, it's like say a vrede dot, but it's even, it's just to show his almost brutality of sy geharde gedrag, um, is very much in contrast with the vulnerability of this, yeah, this um, blind man. Goed, ons sien die bedelaar is moeg en wil nie meer doen wat hy doen nie, hy wens eerder om dood te gaan, want selfs die dood, sal beter wees as wat hy elke dag moet verdier. Even death would be better than what he needs to do every day. Strofe 7 Geld klingel in die blikkie en le dan stil. Die duive koer en een kinkie jil. Mami, hy is blind, piepe dochterkie sag. Hy draai sy kopskuins en hy wacht. So, um, ons weet, die verkeerslig is nou rooi, the robot is red, and what just happened in line 25 is that whoever made their window call, window down, just put money in the, the tin can. And um, line 26, uh, die duive koer en a kinkie jil, is... Almost just emphasizing, if we see in line 25, it ends with, after the sound of the money that fell in the tin, um, there's silence. And what the, the beggar hears after the silence is doves that are chirping and children shouting and laughing in a di far distance, Okay. And I think what's important that after the silence of the money fell in the tin can, doves represent peace and hope. If we think of the dove that brought a green branch to Noah in the biblical times, like it is definitely a symbol of hope and peace. And children are really a symbol of life and 
innocence, you know. And I think line 26 is just a moment of almost hope and peace when that money fell in the can that thank you know the guy probably thought thank goodness that there's a little bit of money and for a brief moment there's that peace or hope that at least there's something in the tin so he can go back to his sleepy spot tonight you know and um but it is also very much a contrast, the doves and the children, with how the man feels. Okay, he feels hopeless and he feels there's no, um, yeah, that life is not good or for him. And then we see the direct words of a child that is in the car next to the, the guy who is begging at the robot. And the child says softly, Mommy, he's blind. Pip, a doctor, he sag. And pip is the sound that a, a chick makes, a little uh, owner kijken. And say, pip sag, and say, Mommy, he's blind. Um, want sy wil nie, hy moet daar hoor nie. And here we actually, aside from reading about eyes that are doof, we actually here have the confirmation in line 27 that he is blind. Um, en dan in reel 28, hy draai sy kop skuins en hy wacht. Ok, waarvoor wacht hy? Hy wacht dalk vir nog geld, of hy wacht vir die tsotsie om te kom, of die verkeerslig om nou weer groen te raak. Ons sien daar, um, hy, is, uh, hy is, is Elisie. When a poet uses Elisie, it's really just to help with the tempo or ry rhythm, die ritme van een gedig. Strofe 8, laaste strofe. Hier is nog 10 rand, sê die vrou. Koop vir jou iets om aan te kou. Die verkeerslig klik en hy hou aan met wacht. Die tsotsie plik hom aan sy seer arm en lach. Sadly in stanza 8, the last stanza, we see that the woman is generous and she wants, she gives him a 10 rand. Um, and then the irony is that she says, buy something to eat, all right? Um, but it's ironic because the money isn't his. The Tsotsi is going to take it. Line 31, die verkeers lig klik en hy hou aan met wacht. He waits, and who is he waiting for here? Die Tsotsi plik om aan sy seer arm en lach. Here we know that the Tsotsi is not far away. He is he is roaming about and he is observing the blind beggar. And he saw that the woman gave a 10 rand. And he is just happy because now he can use the money to can go and buy things that he wants. It's like his scheme or his plan is working. He is lazy. He doesn't have to work because this blind man is working for him. And the sad reality is that, you know, again... We see Saisir Aram, this person who is in pain, and um, he just knows that there's no way out. He is dependent on this um, Tsotsi to help him. Goed, Matrix, so dit is die gedig. Um, dit is eindelijk een hartseer gedig. Ek, um, ja, mens voel hartseer vir die, vir die blinde man, en dat um, mense in ons samenleving so zwaar moet kry. Baie mense is te laai om te werk en bedel vir geld. Partij mense maak asof hulle een gebrek het en daarom kan hulle nie werk nie en bedel hulle. So we do know that there's people who try, who in society misuse this and they pretend that they have a disability just to get money. They're just pure lazy to work. But sadly, there are many people who have an actual disability and other people misuse or abuse this to their own benefit. And we see in this poem that the blind old man is being abused by the Tsotsi who forces him to beg. The Tsotsi is using him as a money-making tool. And the old man, blind man, is being threatened by the Tsotsi because if he doesn't, um, 
if he doesn't earn money and beg at the robot, the Tsotsi won't look after him and take him back to the place where he sleeps. As ons kyk na sintuiglike waarneming, I think this poem really uses a lot of um, uh, senses, so the sense of smell and hearing, um, so a klank na boodsing on a metopia, but then also assonance and alliteration to really emphasize the fact that this blind person is very dependent on his hearing and smelling. So die blinde man moet in sy donker wereld gebruik maak van klanke en geluide waarna hy luister. The blind man is very dependent on sound and, and smelling. We see lots of onomatopoeia and we as the readers actually experience the, the ruimte or the, the surroundings of the blind man almost as much as he is experiencing it. We see alliteration and assonance. Um, om die gedig meer klankrijk te maak. It makes the poem more sound rich. Die gedig maak ook gebruik van paarruim. Wat in kwatreine saamgevat word. And we also read there at the last bullet point. That die klank na boodsing beklem toon. Die feit dat die belinde man meer op sy gehoorsintuig moet staat maak. Die thema en die stemming van ons gedig, as ons hier kyk, dit gaan oor dat swakker lede van een gemeenskap dikwels dier sterker lede uitgebuid word tot hulle eie voordeel. So weak people in our society, people at risk, people with disabilities, people who are poor and vulnerable, those people are being abused and misused by people who have, you know, stronger personalities or who are in a position where they can, yeah, or want to abuse those who are weaker than them to their own benefit. The stemming, which is the tone or atmosphere of our poem, is really depressing, this near drukkend. Um, and then here I would like to say that our title, I didn't want to say it at the beginning, but our title has a literal and figurative meaning. The title literally means at the traffic light in First Avenue. Okay, that is the actual place where the blind person begs. But it is interesting that our beggar is like a robot. He is being used like a robot. The blinde person wordt as a robot rondgelei. He's not doing things by himself. He needs to follow the instructions or he needs to follow what someone else tells him to do. Hy moet doen wat ander vir hom sê om te doen. So our title matrix is actually a metaphor as well because when we read by the robot in eerste laan, it means at the actual robot or it can mean by the blinde man in eerste laan. This then concludes our poem by the robot in eerste laan. Um, Matrix, I think in the light van our omstandighede wil ek graag sê that if we think of yeah, just tough times that people are going through, um, my message that I would like to end off with is that if we know of people who are vulnerable or people who are disabled or just people who are at risk, whether it's physically with a virus roaming around or whether it is people who are vulnerable because they don't have an income or people who are vulnerable because of emotional stress and things that are going on at home. Let us be the light, you know, let's think of this traffic light if you look at the picture and let us be people who shine light and words of encouragement and hope to these people. We can't help everyone but if you just know of one person that you can help and support and just be there for that person. Um, yeah, let's think of those people and let's be a support and, and shine some light on the lives of those who, who maybe struggle more than we do. If you are struggling, remember to reach out and to, to just get in touch with someone that would just be an ear to listen and would like to also you know, help you. I believe that there will be someone that can also help you and guide you. All right. Have a lovely day, and you are all the best with all the preparation for your poems. Um, if you have any questions, you are always welcome to contact me.
Thank you.